some of you will hate me for promoting this message, but we're out here because we see the fear-mongering reality that we all, all of us are living in in this time and age. But God has called us to something greater. God has said that, you know, apart from the weed, apart from drunkenness, apart from alcoholism, apart from drug abuse, apart from sexual morality, there's something that is bigger than life that will await you in the everlasting line of time and God has promised to his son Jesus Christ to give you the forgiveness of sins and also to give you a the promise this is the fulfillment that is given unto you provided and brought forth by God the Father for each and every one of you guys you see though I don't know what your storm is I don't know what you guys are undergoing I don't know what you guys are facing on this day in this very gloomy age and there where people are shutting us down this society is shutting us down you guys have no idea what's happening around here this society is putting you on a leash. Don't you see what better way of actually controlling the masses but to actually, you know, putting people on a leash behind closed doors and have them actually steal away and pull away from God. They're numbing you every day. And I used to smoke weed. I used to go back home and roll that, roll that slip. And when I felt lonely and, and, and nobody seemed to actually show up and come to me, you know, I used to call people up and say, hey, I want to be, I want to be surrounded by people because all of us have an empty side to ourselves. All of us have an empty void in front of us that we want to fulfill with the desires of this world. But guess what? Everything is shattering down. Nothing will be remaining the same. There's only one name under heaven whereby you can call upon me saved. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. And let me, let me tell you this much. There's over 340 prophecies in the Old Testament that spoke of the coming and the ushering of the Messiah, that there will be an age where the Messiah will come to the world and save us and redeem us from our own sin. You guys can laugh and you can mock me all you want because even these prophecies were actually spoken of in the Bible. The Bible says that mockery and scoffers will come in the last days and they will say, where is the coming of the Christ? We haven't seen it. But God is coming back soon, my friends. Not as He actually came first. 2,000 years ago. Only this time he's coming with a wrathful mindset. He's coming back to judge the world. And the reason why he's doing so is because he has called us to repentance once 2,000 years ago. And once again, he is speaking to your hearts tonight. And he wants to pierce through to the darkest hour. He wants to flood your heart. He wants to change you. He wants to no longer see you a slave to sin. You see, but all of us are calling upon the outpouring of the evil that's in our life. And nobody wants to open up their eyes. All of us are blind. All of us are like, you know, people that are being destroyed. You can put your music as loud as you want, my friend, but your music won't save you. Your car won't save you. From your watch, your car, your clothes, everything is collapsing. Everything is shattering. All of you guys have experienced these things. You guys have also experienced people that you have weeped over because you have died. And all of us have a soul that will be rendered unto God one day. And it is a sad reality. But that soul will depart from this body. And that soul will go to God. And you will face your creator and your maker one day. And you will have to give a judgment. You will have, you will have to give an account of everything that you've done in the flesh. My question to, to you is the following. Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready to face God, the God of the universe that has fearfully and wonderfully created you before the foundation of the world? A God that has made a way to His Son to save you. You see, we've got mockers and scoffers here, you know, uh, uh, increasing the volume of the, of the music just so they, they can come against the Word of God, the anointed men of God. But it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll keep preaching here. I love you enough to say that God has a plan for you, just as God has a plan for me. And just as God has a plan for my brother here, and just as God has marked me a long time ago, when I turned my back on God in rebellion and wickedly walked against God in sin, God has come back and flooded my heart. He has called me back home. All you need to do is get on your knees, whatever you are, and call upon the name of the Lord, and you, must, and you shall be saved. Do not fear coronavirus. Do not fear any of that stuff, but you gotta, re you got to repent. you got to turn from your formal ways. you got to come to God. God is waiting. His arms are wide open to say, I love you. Listen, He set me free from my addiction. He set me free from anything that I was stranded by. He set me free and I'm no longer held back to slavery because all of us are slaves to something. We're slaves to our own selfish concerns and our own inhibitions. Whether we want it or not, in some sort of fashion we are, each and every one of us in a specific way, we are slaves to something. But yet when we speak...